Hi there. In this demonstration, we're going to see how to conduct an ANOVA test, um, specifically a one-way ANOVA test in this case. Um, and we're going to do the oversimplified example that we did um, that was presented in the textbook uh, where the means were fairly similar, right? And so it wasn't any particular word problem. It was just three samples, right? Um, and so within each sample, I have a um, response, which is just, I'll call it a score, right? So sample one has these responses, sample two has these responses, sample three has these responses. Uh, so the samples are the factors, right? Okay, so um, I'm going to do this with, uh, with mini tab. It's really easy, and there's two different ways you can do this. You can do this um, where the uh, data are in three columns, and that's sort of how you'd picture it in your head, right? Three samples, each one containing um, some scores. Um, but you can also do this with, with the data in standard format, which is every row is a, is a case, right? So if you look at this, you know, this format, there's actually, you know, five in each column. There's actually 15 cases here, right? And so I can create um, the standard format of that where that has 15 rows, right? And so the so I'd have two columns. The sample would determine what, you know, which, which sample it came from, one. And then score would be the score, um, one of the scores from that sample, right? So sample one, three, that's this one. Then you do all the other ones, sample one, five, that's this one. So you know, the key thing is there's 15 um, different cases here, right? And the variables are which sample or which factor and the score, right? So we're going to do it both ways. Both ways are actually pretty easy. And uh, either way, they start off with this sequence of events. I'm going to go to that ANOVA one way. Okay, so in this case I'm doing the um, situation where I have each sample in its own column, right? And so response data are in a separate column for each factor level. That's me, right? The other option is response data are in one column, right? So that's not us. And when you get here, that, that won't be filled in. That'll be blank. So it gives me my options for the responses, and we're going to do all three of them. Select sample one to sample three. Um, and there's various options you can go with. That's with the um, confidence intervals, graphs. I like the interval plot. Um, so I'm going to go with that, and I just click OK. And here's what's nice about the interval plot, is you sort of see the confidence intervals for each sample mean, and what you see is that they overlap. Right? The difference in sample means doesn't seem that great, and if you look at the confidence intervals, there's certainly overlap. So there isn't really any reason to believe that these means are not all the same. Right? Okay, so how do the tests work out for us? Or the p-value? So if you go here, analysis of variance. Right? There's the test statistic. 2.73, there's the p-value 0 0.107, which is what we got when we did this by hand in the book. That why, that's why it was oversimplified. We could actually do it by hand. Um, but it works. Get the same answer doing it with software. p-value of 0 0.106, a little too big. Um, so it would actually fail to reject the null hypothesis. And there is um, not enough evidence to conclude that the three population means um, are not equal, right? Um, in other words, at least um, we can't say that one of them is different, right? There's no reason to believe they're not all the same. Okay, so suppose we had our data in different form, in uh, standard format. Follow the same sequence almost. Let me open up that window, and that is standard format. So notice I just have 15 cases, all right? These are the sample one cases. And these are the scores. So the sample is repeated over and over. Two, three, there's all the samples, all the scores from sample two, all the scores from sample one, and all the scores from sample three. But notice each row is a case, and that's what Minitab means when they say all the data is in one column, as we'll see in a second. Okay, so we'll follow the same three uh, steps, ANOVA, 
one way. Stat ANOVA one way. And now I don't have my response data in separate columns. I actually have raw data are in one column. Now when it says one column, it doesn't necessarily mean there's only one column in your table here or your um, data array. It just means that every row is a separate case. Okay, and this stuff won't be in here when you get there, so I'll get rid of it. All right, and the response is the score, right? That's what we're checking, the score. Response, score, check. And the factor is which sample it comes from. So sample the factor. I click OK. And again, I get the same confidence interval plot. And I get the same, where is it, analysis of variance, the same F test statistic, and the same P value. Um, it's just a little, you know, this is not the way we as humans would, would look at data in this f form. You know, it's all right. You don't have to repeat the one five times, you know, just give me one row with with those, with one column with those scores in it. But but when you're sending data into uh, Minitab and, and other statistical software packages, um, it, it, it likes having data in this format, right? Each row represents one case. But either way, once you get it in this format, or if it starts in that format, it's really easy. Um, Minitab, it's easy. It, it does a great job with a lot of stuff. It's a great software package. Okay, um, that's it. We covered it. Bye.